In this video, we're going to discuss how to graph the marginal benefit curve. So when we were doing our production possibilities frontier earlier, we were identifying the maximum amount of food and clothing that an economy could produce given the resources that were currently available, right? And we had given an example where we were stranded on an island, right? And we were trying to determine with our group how much food we would produce and how much clothing we would produce. So we plotted out these points and got our little production possibilities frontier here, right? So this little curve is all the different combinations, the, the maximum amount of food and clothing that we could produce given our current resources. And we had said that each point here, this point, this point, each of these combinations was efficient. And what we meant by when we say efficient is, for example, right here, we could not produce an additional unit of food, right? So when we're doing this right here, when we're doing three units of food and four units of clothing, we couldn't give up, this is, I'll just call this point three, four. When we're doing three units of food and four units of clothing, we couldn't do an additional unit of food. We couldn't do four units of food without giving up at least one unit of clothing, right? And then all the ones in here, all these points are inefficient. We don't want to be there. Now, the question is, if all these are efficient, these do all these points along the curve, right? Everything along the curve is efficient. Then how do we decide which is the best one, right? Because we have all these different combinations. How do we decide? Do we want this point? Do we want this point? Do we want this point, etc., right? And we decide by looking at consumers' preferences and seeing what will actually what we'll call allocative efficiency. Now we're talking about efficiency in production when we're talking about the, the PPF and constructing it and how he, at this point we couldn't produce an additional unit of food without giving up an additional unit of clothing, et cetera, right? That's production efficiency. Every point along the PPF is efficient in production. Allocative efficiency is we're saying, okay, there's some point along this, along this curve that corresponds to people's preferences, to the goods that they want the most. There's some bundle of goods, right? We might make guesses. For example, zero food and 10 clothing. We might just guess that even though we could produce that bundle of goods, that probably people aren't gonna be happy in a world where we have zero food, right? So we can go and we can, we, if you had indifference curves, if you know how to do that, we could actually put an indifference curve and see the one that is tangent to the PPF, right? That's a little more advanced and we'll talk about that later. I wanna show you a simpler way. We can just think about the marginal benefit. We can look, if we know people's marginal benefit, the willingness to pay for an additional unit of food and so forth, and we also know the marginal cost curve, right, which we can derive from this and we have in our last video, then we can find the point where the marginal benefit is equal to the marginal cost. So the marginal benefit of a, a, a unit of food, where is that equal to the marginal cost? And that's going to be our socially efficient level. That's gonna be our optimal level of food and clothing. So that's a little abstract, but this, just let me show you before, if, if you haven't watched the video, we, we made a video where we looked at the marginal cost of, and, and from the perspective of producing food, if we went from zero units of food to one additional unit of food, the marginal cost would be one. If we have one unit of food and wanted to get an extra unit of food, the marginal cost would be two and so forth, right? We have this increasing, increasing marginal cost curve. And that, that explains why we have this bowed out shape with the PPF, right? Resources are not all equally productive for each good, right? Some people are better at producing clothing than food and so forth. And if we have everybody producing clothing, uh, we're not getting as much benefit for that last unit of clothing. Uh, we're giving up a lot more in, in, in terms of food than we were. So we went through all that before, right? Now I wanna show you the marginal benefit curve, right? So marginal benefit, marginal benefit, I'll just abbreviate MB, marginal benefit is our willingness to pay or consumers or the people on the island, right? We can look at their willingness to pay. So we could say, okay, look, everybody, if you had zero units of food, right? If you have no food to get an additional unit of food, to go from zero to one unit of food, what would you be willing to pay hypothetically, right? And let's say they say, okay, well, five units of clothing. They'd be willing to give five units of clothing if they have zero units of food to get one extra unit of food. So we could say, okay, so if we're at zero, right? There, let me just put the origin here. We'll say zero. Uh, then at that point, and I actually I need to put a little little extra one here. So we have, five, oh, 
now let's do this in purple to be consistent. So here's five. So the marginal benefit, the marginal benefit here would be if you have zero food, the marginal benefit would be you'd be willing to pay, your willingness to pay WTP, willing to pay up to five units of clothing to get an additional unit of food, right? Now, if you have one unit of food, let's say, and, and th now all of this, and bear in mind, this cannot be derived, this cannot be derived by the PPF. So if you're in an economics class or something, somebody has to give you this information, right? So this is not, we, we got the marginal cost curve from the PPF, oh, the PPF, but we cannot get the marginal benefit information, right? So if you're an econ or something, your professor would have to give you this information. So the marginal benefit when we have one unit of food, so the incremental benefit of one unit of food, so we go one at this point, when we're at one unit of food, we'd be willing to pay four units of clothing. And when we're at two units of food, that we'd be willing to pay an additional three or give up three units of clothing. And then we get, let's see here, so now we've got two, we've got, so three units of food, when we're at three units of food, we'd be willing to give up two units of clothing. So this is based on people's preferences. This is based on people's preferences. And so now we can actually draw out the line. We can draw, we've got a little line here. And so it's see that it is decreasing. It's interesting because remember when we made the marginal cost curve, the marginal cost was increasing. But the marginal benefit curve is decreasing generally. And the idea is that, that people like variety. And so they're not, you know, as you get more and more of a certain good, it's not as valuable to you, right? So, okay, so let's just, we've got this decreasing marginal benefit curve, right? So as people have no food at all, they'd be willing to pay a lot to get some food. But then as they get to three food, they're like, ah, I'd only be willing to give up two units of clothing to get to get an extra unit of food, right? So now here is where this becomes important. And this is how it's gonna tell us when we have that PPF and we say, which point do we want along that curve? This is what's gonna tell us because we can look and say where the marginal benefit equals the marginal cost. That's the point where we want to be at, right? So we want to be where the marginal benefit equals the marginal cost. So we can look, and, there, and now we're going to need our marginal cost information. So if you remember, if you remember our marginal cost here of, of food, when we were at two food, right? When we had two units of food, and we say, what would be the cost to go one extra unit? It was three. And when we look at the marginal benefit, we want marginal cost to equal marginal benefit. That's the point where we want, right? Marginal cost equals marginal benefit. Well, we notice that, well, when we're at two food, the marginal benefit is also three, right? You see that? When we're at two food, the marginal cost equals the marginal benefit, right? So think about this. Why is this the efficient point? Well, let's say we went to three food, right? If we're, or if we were at three food, if we had three food, then the marginal benefit would be two and the marginal cost would be four. So the marginal cost would actually be higher, right? And so that's why we want the bundle that's the best, the one that we prefer the most, even though they're all efficient in production, would be two food, right? So that, that would be the amount, right? And so how much does that correspond to? That corresponds to two clothing, right? So of all the different points along the PPF, right, we would actually prefer where we have two food and seven clothing. So this would be, we'd say this is the most preferred. This is the most preferred. So if we had, uh, if we had an indifference curve, it would be tangent to the PPF right there. Okay, and so we said at that point, so it's not only efficient in production, it's also allocatively efficient.